as test pilots, if you told us when we were students that we would get an opportunity not only to fly a new developmental aircraft, but then get to fly the first flight of a spaceship, I think we would have told you you were crazy. When we launch from America with a rocket built uh, in America by a, an American company who's only been flying vehicles for the last decade or so, that is a success story straight out of the movies. Zero. Ignition. Lift off. Set for five. Aim high. Go Falcon. Go Dragon. You start from essentially an idea that NASA had to have private companies essentially build the vehicles completely uh, on their own. So it has been a long nine years in, in many respects. We are gonna launch American astronauts on American rockets from American soil. And I'm gonna tell you that this is a high priority mission for the United States of America. NASA has an ability to be a customer in a very robust commercial marketplace in low earth orbit. But we also want to have numerous providers that are competing against each other on cost and innovation. And that's what Commercial Crew is all about. This is a new generation, a new era in human spaceflight. We think about Mercury, Gemini, Apollo, and then Space Shuttle. Those are really the, you know, the four times in history when we have put humans on brand new spacecraft. And the last time the United States did it was on STS-1 when we launched the space shuttle for the first time back in 1981. So it's been a long time since we've put humans on a brand new spacecraft. For the last nine years, we have been purchasing rides on Russian Soyuz rockets, and those the, the costs, they've gone up significantly. The Russians have been great partners, but it's important for the United States to have its own launch capability. The shuttle was built uh, decades ago and had a lot of uh, switch interfaces that maybe folks would be familiar with if they looked at uh, old hardware. Uh, the Dragon is going to look a lot newer and modern and sleek, uh, a touchscreen interface. There certainly still are some uh, buttons and switches and lights, uh, but it is uh, definitely a lot cleaner cockpit uh, than, the, than the space shuttle was. One of the things that's really been interesting over the last couple of years as we've uh, uh, learned to work with our, our commercial partners is, is how both SpaceX and NASA have evolved to work together. You know, uh, it, it takes a lot of uh, confidence and audacity to pull off a, a human spaceflight mission, but uh, you also need to be a little bit paranoid that uh, things can get complicated really quick and you need to be prepared for that. And so I think uh, maybe that uh, preparation piece has come from the NASA side and the, that audacity piece maybe has come from the SpaceX side and we've kind of merged it together uh, to get where we are right now. I think it's been really remarkable what SpaceX has accomplished. 10 years is a, is a long time and we should have a, a healthy respect that uh, they were going at a pretty good clip to accomplish what they've accomplished. You know, the agency went through some challenges uh, after the shuttle program ended and the astronaut office went through some challenges and eight and a half, nine years later to see where we are and to you know, potentially go back to the moon in a few short years. We would have never thought, you know, after we landed Atlantis back in 2011 that, you know, nine years later we would be where we are in, in some ways and it's better than I would have imagined. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.